Okay, let's chat everybody. We have a couple big updates. Number one, we're gonna talk about TS. NP, which is going to be humble very soon. And number two, we're going to talk about the EV market because things are getting crazy. My portfolio of EVs are pretty heavily skewed NEO, and that accounted for a 10% drop today. So we're going to talk about that, why it did that, and some of my thoughts on that as well. Um, but first, we're going to start off with TSNP, which is going to be humble. And before we do any of that, I am working on something big and I will release that on Friday. But in the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe. We are seeing a ton of growth in this channel. We are beating our competitors and that's really, really nice. It's not a competition. Uh, financial information is good for everybody and I encourage everyone to do this. However, it's uh, the competitive streak in me is a little happy that we got you know some more growth than people in my sector. People above my sector, they're crushing me, but there's a couple people that were doing well. Anyway, so uh, also make sure you drop down below and get your two free stocks when you sign up with Webull. Even if you don't use Webull as your primarily primary trading platform, it has a better desktop integration than Robinhood and just a better desktop display. Robinhood has a better UX on the phone. So that's one thing, but you know, just throw a couple bucks there uh, just so you can have some extra free stocks. Why wouldn't you do that? It makes no sense. So jump in and do that. So let's look at uh, the, the stock prices from today on TSNP. And as we know, on Friday, we are hoped to get a ticker change to Humble, which is gonna be really, really exciting. Trading down a couple of cents nothing massive someone said on the reddits here that uh, george sharp specifically said yes it was a strange sell off of tsnp at the end of the day to me it looked like it was maybe a margin call uh i was about to say i don't tsnp can't be bought on a margin unless you're special um and i'm not special not that tsnp can be bought on margin but if the account had other stocks underwater, then the broker would sell off whatever it uh, took to bring the account value whole. It's fine. I mean, I just think we saw a massive decline in general today in this um, territory and on this growth in these growth stocks and these tech stocks. So uh, it, it didn't surprise me. What I do want to point out as far as news wise is Humble Marketplace NTFs to launch April 2021. So Brian Foote, and I've said this time and time and time again, is a really good marketer. He's a really good PR guy. He knows how to get himself PR. A comment I was preaching about his PR skill uh, about getting himself into Forbes and then someone said, well, you can just pay to get yourself in Forbes. Yes, you definitely can. But the point there is he is focused on PR and he knows how to get it. And it's not about how easy or hard it is to get into a uh, specific publication that has nothing to do with the merits of the PR. It has everything to do with the fact that he is seeking it out. And as we've seen in the stock, the more PR is out there and the more splashy headlines he can get, the more trading volume we see and the increase in the stock price that we see. So he is attaching himself right here to the NT or NFT space. And let me define that for you just so we're all on the same page here. So NFT is a unique digital token which effectively verifies authenticity and ownership. It is encrypted with an artist or creator's signature on the blockchain, a digital ledger used in cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. So he is saying that the Humble Marketplace NTF is going to uh, launch in the month of April 2021. How this will look, what this will be, we do not know. He said we'll be using the Humble Token engine. So that that engine is gonna be like the utility company. It's like there's gonna be roads uh, and the infrastructure of this whole new world is what he's trying to set up. So the Humble Token engine to experiment with both physical and digital asset ownerships, which means he will be tokenizing. They will they will use that those roads that they're building. Think of it that way. That, that's the mental model of which I'd like to think of it. They're using those roads and infrastructure they're setting up to tokenize and sell things from there. And then they will take part ownership, probably that won't be the business model, but they'll probably take some sort of transaction fees. So they're going to be the marketplace for NFTs. And that's really, really great. I don't know of a lot of other companies that are going in that space as a marketplace play, but we do see TSNP 
going to market in so many different ways with that Alipay competitor, with the vendor to customer, and with those ETXs and those bundles that are getting really challenged with regulatory approval here in America, but are um, getting inroads elsewhere. So we see him going to market with literally anything he can. And I don't think that's like a desperation play. Some people have said that. I don't think it's a desperation play at all. What I think it is is a smart strategy because it, he's really just building. It seems like it's all over the place, but it's really not because think of, think of that biz, that mental model of roads, right? If you have the infrastructure and you're building the infrastructure, you can put a lot of things on it. It almost doesn't matter. It's almost like if you have one road and you own the road and you own the, the toll booth for the road, you can charge every single car. It doesn't really matter what the car looks like or what the car model is or anything else like that. So with this marketplace, he can sell NFTs if he wants to. And so he's cleverly aligning himself and the company to be on that forefront of the NFT uh, space. And I think it's great for shareholders and retail investors and everybody else that has it. So it's really, really nice to see. Um, Brian, Brian Foote is really the, he really is the MVP of this whole thing. And so it's really nice to, um, to see that. And the last thing I want to talk about before we get to everything else, is some of the, um, I love reading the comments, especially on Reddit and there's a lot of questions around the strategy of this, not about the actual model or the strategy itself, but more about how it will be implemented. And that's just kind of not how Brian does things from what we see. He kind of says, this is what's going to happen. And then he iterates and kind of makes it up as they go. And I think that's exactly what a startup founder should do. So I think he's in the right space. And I think that some of these questions are completely valid. I think they're great questions, but I just don't think that they are going to be answered right now um, or in any time soon. So let's jump to EVs, which is what my portfolio, actually, I believe as of my Robinhood account, it said I was um, 8% into EVs and, and a 10% down today on NEO. So there's a couple reasons why this is happening. One, massive fire in Japan. We're going to look at those news articles in a second. Number two, just a, a conductor chip, semiconductor shortage in general, which is just bad for EVs all over the place. There's a ship in the Suez Canal, which is kind of undefined how that is affecting things right now. Doubtful that the supply chain of conductors and chips, since they are so small, goes through actual uh, ship shipping, but it might. I'm sure some components of this supply chain actually does, um, but we wouldn't see that reflected in the stock price quite yet. I think what's more important is that treasury yield bond has not spiked up anymore recently, which it did a few weeks ago, and that's really been in the news a lot. And that's when the treasury yield bond spikes up, you see a big sell off in kind of these growth stocks. What I do think you're seeing is kind of just an overall general um, perfect storm of bad things for EVs right now, but also a switching a little bit of monetarily investing goals to from a growth to more of a value play. And you've seen that reflected in a couple of different ways. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think in the last five years, it's been so heavy with growth, especially in the last year or two. All we've heard about is Teslas and the Neos and the SPACs and stuff like that and there's growth. And I think a lot of people are switching to value plays which I think are super, super fair to do um, because that actually works with, with the economy people are um, looking at. We can definitely look at this article, but that's not what I wanted to pull up, but I did just want to pull up that massacre of 10% that we saw today. That is not good, but I will actually be taking more money and doubling down on NEO. I just think the fundamentals are great. I mean call me crazy, but the fundamentals are great. And then also the Chinese government has been shown time and time again, whether it's directly through the, the federal type government or the province, the provincial type governments to jump in. They partner with NEO. They um, help with the manufacturing. They take, they do whatever they can to make this company survive. And that's exactly what you want to see. So the fire at the uh, renaissances or whatever chip plant uh, will cause problems for Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. That's not it, though. I know those are the big splashy names, but that plant has 30% global share of the microcontroller unit chips used in cars. 
and that's huge. Uh, right here, and other Japanese automakers scrambled on Monday to assess the uh, product impact of a fire at the electronics plant. So what it did, it got it got into the containment room, and that was important because I guess it really uh, messed things up and screwed things up. And and what they said, the concerns of the impact, just to quantify it, of the fire on production sent auto shares sliding all across the board, right? But with the big three, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan, and I think you really need to expand Tesla and Neo into the conversation when you're talking about the big three. I think you need to expand that to the big five. Closing down more than 3.3%. As we know, Neo is down 5%. Um, the shares of the actual company producing these microchips were down 5.5% uh, and ended 4.9% lower. Uh, it said it would probably take more than a month to return to normal supply. So this is what is going to happen, and this is what's really interesting. Number one, market got spooked because of that news. Awful, bad, down. What I'm assuming, we're going to pop back up. But then we're going to see a little bit is that the production that was actually up and went up in smoke today, for lack of a better term, is not going to affect the markets until a month out from here because it will be a month behind from the shipping. So like all the things that they've already shipped are going to be be used. And then there'll be that blip in the supply chain. And then they say it will take another month for it to return to normal supply. So we have, you're going to, you're going to see a delay. It's not going to, there's going to be that initial drop, which we just saw. And then you're going to see the supply go back up because they've already shipped all these things. And people are going to make it and manufacture it. And it's going to be a little bit of a delay. And then you're going to see that that spot accounted for with the fires catch up about a month later. And then you're going to see about a month of production pulled back in a month from now. Does that make sense? Because there's going to be a little blip on, on the radar. But it hasn't hit quite yet. The market got spooked today. But the actual... Um, negative production capacity has not really gone there yet. And not only did we have that fire in Japan, we also have, um, uh, this article sums it up really, really nicely, a global chip shortage. Unfortunately, as you saw, well, fortunately and then unfortunately, uh, the big car companies were upbeat about the industry's recover in the early fall, the industry's recovery in the early fall. Demand was rebounding from the illness and the factories were all up and coming again. And then, bam, you get hit with a global semiconductor shortage that has just really decimated the industry. So you are having a lot going on with this poor car and EV in general industry happening right now. Like the article says right here in December, the parts flow from Continental and other suppliers had dried up that VW announced it would stop production of best-selling brands such as Audi and its namesake VW brands at plants in Europe, China, and North America. Audi citing a chip shortage forelowed 10,000 factory workers for the first time since spring lockdowns. Ford Motor Company, Honda Motor, and other soon reduced output of vehicles from big pickups to compact sedans. Now you saw in the last quarterly earning reports from NIO to have it was going gangbusters it was upping its supply it was upping its production capacity and then you just see this happen it really is as someone called it a perfect storm of negativity for the general car market and ev market all across the board so you're going to see this i think ripple a long time in my opinion this is when you double down this is when you buy uh, my friends and i were talking about this all day today and we are all buying the dip we are buying the there's an acronym about b t f d by the friggin dip if you will i'm sure that's what it means and and that's what we're doing because these are not seasonal plays these are not swing trades these are not option trades that we are making with something like a neo neo is so entrenched in the culture of lifestyle brands in Chinese startup companies and so entrenched in the government, I just don't think it's going anywhere. I'm in it for the long haul. I definitely think we can have a price target again of 60. We're at uh, 36, 39 as of today, 36 as of close, I think something like that. Probably we'll see a little bounce tomorrow morning. I'm going to do a limit order, get in with maybe two thousand more dollars so let's see how that goes but these are all things that 
I think it's perfect time to buy since it is a, uh, you know, you're seeing a blip, a blip in the radar of just an industry that is not going anywhere. These are not industry affecting things. This is the industry catching up to the demand and there's just not enough supply. And then you, you have a couple of kinks in the supply chain and that's just terrible. I mean, it's, it's an out, it's a disproportional effect, something that has been around for a long time and has uh, caught up with its supply would not be as an attractive stock, right? You won't see, you wouldn't see that growth of a stock if it was like an airline and it'd been around forever, you know, 50, 60 years, it wouldn't be that attractive, but you're seeing these growth companies in growth industries and they are having growing pains and supply chain logistics is just one of those. So I am betting that it's going to be figured out sooner rather than later. And I think this is a perfect time to buy. I thought 60 was a little high um, for me to to get in again, but uh, 30 all day all day long. And if it goes a little lower, that's fine. I, I think that the chips, semiconductors, all all those supply chain supply chain logistics will be back to normal. No one will even be talking about this in six months. So enjoy. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor. Big news coming out on Friday, not just for TSNP, but also for me personally. I can't wait to share with you what it is. And so enjoy.